What's up, shipbuilders? Do you want to turn your star eagle from this to this? Or how about from getting owned by the Crimson Fleet to having those pirates turn and run when you jump to their system? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that step by step as your character level progresses upgrade by upgrade as they unlock to turn the Star Eagle, a decent ship in its own right, to one of the most powerful, in fact the most powerful, combat ship in the entire game. Now I've seen a lot of Star Eagle upgrade guides and honestly, I think they're all weak. Either they only cover minor upgrades, not going far enough to actually provide you with the best performing parts, or they focus on cosmetic changes that aren't true upgrades in the real sense of the word. Now the Star Eagle is a really great ship as soon as you acquire it. In fact, it's one of the best base ships, in my opinion, in the entire game. But it does have some key weaknesses that need immediate attention. To upgrade it properly, I think, is actually quite simple. The primary limiter in how and when you upgrade is actually your character's level. Now that's because ship parts only unlock once you reach certain character levels. I don't necessarily agree with this gameplay mechanic, but uh, we're forced to deal with it. So what I'm going to do is outline each upgrade incrementally that I think is truly worthwhile as your character levels and your skill requirements unlock. Um, I'm not going to focus on cosmetic changes, and that includes HABs, I'll leave that up to you. What I am going to focus on are the options available to you to make this ship the most powerful it can be uh, as your character progresses through the game. So as I already said, the Star Eagle is already a very powerful ship. You have one of the best Class A reactors with 29 reactor power to allocate across your ship's systems and some of the best engines in the game, the Slayton SA-4330s. These have some of the best thrust-to-mass and maneuvering thrust-to-mass ratios of any engine in the game. And <clears throat> not only that, being Class A, they're some of the fastest as well. Now, you do only have four of them, and you could have up to six because they only take two reactor power each. Uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now the very first upgrade I believe you should focus on uh, is the weakest part of this ship, and that is its weapons. You do have some electromagnetic weapons, which are kind of middle of the road as far as EM weapons are concerned. You have two lasers and two missile launchers. Now lasers primarily impact shields, and missile launchers are incredibly slow to reload and to fire. Uh, not only that, but their range is actually much shorter than the stat box would indicate. So that means your primary means of destroying enemy ships are lasers, which do minimal damage to a ship's hull, and missiles, the slowest reloading weapon in the game. So the very first upgrade should be to swap out your lasers for some particle beams. And not just any particle beams, but the Vanguard Obliterator Auto Projectors. Now, these aren't locked behind any level requirements. Uh, in order to acquire these, you simply need to complete the very first mission of the Vanguard questline, which, if you're serious about building ships, you'll want to do this anyway, because this mission allows you to easily level up your piloting skill in their combat simulator. Now, these Vanguard particle beams, they're Class A parts, so you don't have to worry about upgrading your reactor to use them. And again, they're available no matter your character level, so just complete that first Vanguard quest and you can add six of these on your ship, which do incredible damage to both shields and the ship's hull. Now, the stock missiles are the Infiltrator SC-02s. These are actually some really good missile launchers in the game, but unfortunately this ship only has two of them, whereas you could have up to four on your ship. But you'll need to be quite a high level, up to level 51, before you can add any more and by then our weapon choice is likely going to change anyway. And we'll keep the EM weapons for now as well, we'll come back to those later. The second upgrade that you should consider is actually your grav drive. 
I don't typically put much importance on a grav drive, but this ship doesn't have a very far jump range, only 21 light years. And I like to have at least 28 light years of range as that ensures I can go anywhere in the galaxy because uh, <clears throat> the two star systems that are farthest apart are just under 28 light years away, or apart in distance. So for your grav drive, you have a couple of choices to reach that with the mass of this ship being as low as it is. The Helios 400 grav drive, which requires your character to be level 21 uh, and starship design level one. Uh, or the R4000 Alpha, which requires your character to be level 22 and have starship design level two. Both are class A, so you don't have to worry about upgrading your reactor. Really the main difference in these is mostly the connector points on the sides, uh, to be honest. So whichever one uh, you like best, go ahead and, and pick it. Now the next upgrade as your character level progresses uh, is honestly a personal choice and it will come with some trade-offs and we'll revisit these again later in the video. This ship is currently outfitted with four SA-43 engines, and as I said at the beginning, these are some of the best engines in the game. They are Class A, so we, again, we don't have to uh, change our reactor. Uh, <clears throat> and actually, Class A engines, as I said earlier, have the highest top speed in the game, higher than B or C engines. But you cannot add the additional two Slayton engines that you are allowed until you're at least level 43 and have Starship Design Rank 4. However, you could swap these out for four White Dwarf 3015s. See, the White Dwarf 3015s have an even higher top speed, the highest in the game, even though they're still Class A engines. And they unlock at character level 24. Now, you will also need Starship Design Rank 4 to use these engines as well, and so you may not have dumped in skill points up to Rank 4 uh, for that skill quite yet if you're just level 24, so you may need to be a high level anyway. But the other drawback to the White Dwarf 3015s is that you're trading maneuvering thrust for this highest in-game top speed, meaning we'd have to g potentially give up some mass, likely cargo space, to maintain that max mobility if we choose to go with the White Dwarfs. So, is it worth it? If it were me, I'd say yes. I'd have a separate dedicated cargo ship anyway, uh, <clears throat> and so I'd make this trade. But do you have to? Not at all. The SA4330s are still great engines. So the choice here is yours. For now, we'll stick with the SA4330s and we'll move on to the next upgrade. Now, once your character reaches an even higher level, we can get to the point where some serious upgrades can be had. For these, your character, again, needs to have reached a decent overall level and invested into some of the tech skill tree, specifically piloting uh, and starship design. Again, that very first Vanguard mission with their pilot simulator lets you level these up uh, quickly and easily, at least for piloting. Now, <clears throat> for our first reactor upgrade, we want to get up to at least a Class B reactor, as that will unlock a lot of additional ship parts that we can then upgrade as well. But actually, if it were me, there's a Class C reactor that becomes available at a decent character level, the Fuser DC-402. It requires a character level of 38. It generates 34 power points, so we're upgrading by 5 points from the 29 of our initial reactor. And it has over 1,000 health points, or whole. Now, it does require piloting rank 4 because it's a Class C reactor. But again, you can easily get this from the Vanguard Flight Simulator. And it does require Starship Design Rank 2, which isn't that high of a bar to attain. Just throw on some extra ship parts. And now that we have a Class C reactor, we can make some significant upgrades to other systems. So the next upgrade after we upgrade our reactor should be our shield. Your shield is a critical part of your ship, uh, especially as you encounter higher level enemies. Now we have a couple of choices that we can choose from because we have access to all ship parts, class A, B, and C with our class C reactor. Now the shield with the highest shield health in the game at 1600, the Assurance SG-1800 shield, is class C, requires character level of 27, 
which we're already past that if we're using the reactor we just talked about, and Starship Design Rig 4. However, its mass is also very high, which will degrade our mobility. Another option is the 28T Defender. This has the second highest shield health in the game at 1500 and a much lower mass, and it's only class B. However, <clears throat> it does also require Starship Design Rank 4. A third choice, the Vanguard Bulwark Shield, uh, has only 50 points less in total shield health at 1450, and it's an even lower mass than the Defender Shield, and no additional skill requirements. So this is probably our most likely choice. Uh, ultimately, the choice is yours. For the sake of this video, we'll go with the Vanguard Shield, uh, as I think it is a really good balance between shield health and mass. Now, also at this point, for our next upgrade, <clears throat> we can put on some seriously hard-hitting weapons. This, again, is a personal choice. If you want the highest damage output weapons in the game, you'll want particle beams. Now, we already put on the Vanguard Obliterator Auto Projectors as our very first upgrade. Next, the PBO-175 Auto Helion Beams and the Exterminator-95 MEV Auto Helion Beams. Both are some of the highest damage per second weapons to both shields and health. And they do both require Starship Design Rank 4. Now, if you like turrets, the Obliterator 250 Alpha Turrets and the PBO 300 Auto Alpha Turrets are some of the best that your money can buy. The Obliterator Turrets require Starship Design Rank 3, the PBO 300 Turrets require Starship Design Rank 1. If the tech skill leveling is a hindrance, um, the Vanguard Hellfire Auto Cannons, actually a ballistic weapon, is one of the best ballistic weapons in the game. Again, it unlocks after you complete that first Vanguard quest. It has an incredibly high fire rate. You can put up to six of these on your ship. And so the combination of that together, it actually does decent damage to enemy shields and incredible damage to an enemy's hull. Now for me, I'm gonna go with particle beams just to get that highest damage per second output. And to get these particle beams to sit nicely on the ship, I'm going to use just a couple equipment, or uh, actually their weapon mounts, on either side of the cockpit. Just to get a few extra weapon mounts for all of these particle beams that we now have upgraded our ship with. The next upgrade, we're going to revisit our engines. Once we reach level 43, assuming, again, we have Starship Design Rank 4, we can place some additional SA-4330s if you didn't choose to go with the White Dwarf 3015s earlier. Now, I would strongly recommend having all six of these SA-4330s as that'll give you just that much more maneuvering thrust, meaning you can put more cargo on the ship while maintaining maximum mobility. Now, if you don't care about having more cargo and therefore don't need additional maneuvering thrust to maintain maximum mobility, it can actually be advantageous to have fewer engines because you don't have to allocate as much reactor power to your engines while still getting their full power output. Which leads us to our final upgrade, our reactor. Now, I know I've said this before, this will be a personal decision. I recommend one of the following. If you've used any Class C parts or weapons from our prior upgrades, you'll have to continue to use a Class C reactor. If not, you have the option to upgrade to the 104DS MAG inertial reactor. It's a Class B reactor, meaning it has a lower mass than the others, but still produces 39 power points, which is just below the maximum of 40, making this one of the best reactors in the game. But for Class C reactors, I choose one of the following either the SF-40 Sheared Flow, the Pinch-8Z, or the Pinch-8A. Now the SF-40 and Pinch-8Z are both very similar. Both produce the maximum 40 reactor power. The main difference being the 8Z has a few additional health points at the cost of a bit higher mass. The Pinch-8A version, however, uh, is an interesting choice because its health points are significantly higher at 1950 compared to the next highest in the game, the 8Z, at 1350. That's a big difference. But it does come at the cost of having only 36 power points to allocate across your ship systems. 
So you're giving up four power points for an additional 600 health points. Now, the choice is yours. For me, the higher health value is just too significant to ignore. And with particle beam weapons, uh, especially the auto-firing ones, you're really not missing that much in, in uh, power points. But <clears throat> again, your choice. To consider these reactors, you'll basically need to be at level 60, Starship Design rank 4, piloting rank 4. Uh, that goes without saying if you're already flying a Class C ship. Now, after all of these upgrades, you may find that your grav jump range actually drops below 28 light years. If that's the case, consider swapping your grav drive for the Aurora 12G. Just a little bit more mass, but also provides a bit more jump thrust, just to get you that extra range um, so you can travel anywhere you want in the galaxy. And finally, how did I outfit my Star Eagle? Well, <clears throat> I went with the four White Dwarf 3015s. Their top speed, especially when completely maxed with character perks and crew bonus, make any ship equipped with them basically untouchable. You can boost away and recharge your shields whenever you need to. However, to maintain top mobility and be efficient with total mass, I had to make a few other changes. Now I needed to swap out the cargo that comes with the Star Eagle for our, actually, with two of the Dagama 1020 cargo holds. So this reduces my total cargo a bit um, down to just under a thousand. Now with character and crew perks, it's back up to nearly 1400, but I'm saving a lot on mass. The other place I'm saving on mass is I swapped out the fuel tanks and put on some Titan 450s. Um, altogether, these provide me with 220 fuel units, which is enough for my character with a max astrodynamic skill to jump from one side of the galaxy to the other. And again, I went with all particle beams just to get that max damage output and the Vanguard Bulwark Shield to keep my total mass down. And finally, the Pinch 8A Reactor for that highest ship health in the game. But ultimately, the choice is yours. The goal of this is to outline what I think are the most critical upgrades at each stage of your character level, and not just the cosmetic upgrades. Now there is one last upgrade that I debated including in this, um, and that is if you want the best possible stats across the entire ship, the one thing that I left off of mine was the best shield in the game, the Assurance, because it comes at a cost of a really high mass. So if you want the best shield in terms of shield health and the White Dwarf 3015s for the highest top speed and all of these highest damage per second particle beams and the reactor with the highest health points and still have top mobility, we're going to have to make some cuts somewhere to our mass, the mass of our ship, but it can be done. Basically, we're adding about 90 mass units by swapping from the Vanguard Bulwark Shield to the Assurance, so we have to make that up somewhere. The easiest place is to just cut out our cargo, and frankly, I would already have a separate cargo dedicated ship anyway. This is really my combat ship. Now if you wanted to save a bit of your cargo, you could start cutting structural pieces. But structural pieces don't have much mass, so you're going to have to cut a lot of them. But it can be done. Now, it's going to take some work to maybe make it look aesthetically like you would like, but what you end up with is a very fast, very strong, very deadly combat ship. And if you've watched my video on the most powerful ship you can build in the game. That's essentially what we're doing here. Now you'll see we've already stripped out a lot of structural pieces. We're still about 30 mass units short and so I'm going to take out a couple more but the grav drive is a place where we can save a bit because we've already gotten rid of a decent amount of mass we can actually pick a lower grav drive, this Helios 400, and this weighs a lot less than the Aurora drive we had. And so now you'll see we're back to 100 mobility. And we've still got about, I would say, I think eight or nine mass units to play with here uh, before we start to lose mobility. So at this point, it's just making things look a little more aesthetically pleasing 
And again, I'm not putting a whole lot of thought into this. There's just a little bit of organization here to line things up, get things symmetrical. Um, just to have a decent shape to this ship after we've removed so many structural pieces. We've kind of lost the Star Eagle shape, so <clears throat> I'm going to get some wings back on, uh, put these engines back on, and then use these Stroud pieces along with the Nova wings to try to get us back to the Star Eagle shape. And the other nice thing about these Nova wings is their weapon mounts, and so it'll give us the shape we want plus we'll get some weapon mounts as well out of the deal. Now I've got some extra weapons here I gotta clean up. Get rid of these two in the front. I can actually put these PBOs on the side here. Let me get rid of the weapon mounts I've already got up front that are currently holding those PBO 175s. So we can get rid of those. And that's probably pretty close. Again, I'm not going to put a ton of time into it. You can spend a lot of time on these structural pieces. We're still a few mass units short uh, of our total before we'd start to lose mobility. But that's basically it. We'll put a little tail piece on the back to cover up the reactor. Cover that with a coat of paint. And now you've got a max stat ship from the Star Eagle. Again, I think this is the most powerful ship in the game in terms of combat stats. And it's a ton of fun to fly. Super quick, highest top speed. Enjoy. Until next time, keep building.